Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat and this session we would look at the going concern assumption, a topic that's covered in intermediate accounting as well as the CPA for section exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover including many CPA topics. On my website, which is farhatlectures.com, you can find additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, true false, multiple choice, exercises. If you're studying for your CPA exam, 2000 plus CPA question. This is a list, not a complete list of all the courses that I cover. So if you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, especially if you're a CPA candidate and, and you're interested in your success on the exam, I can help you add those seven to ten points to your score. So I strongly suggest you check it out. So let's talk about the going concern assumption. And first we want to talk about what is the big idea? Why do what's the big idea about the going concern? Okay? Well, you have to understand that we assume that we're gonna be in business forever. Okay, that's the assumption that we make when we record financial transaction. And the presumption is fair because when you go in business, you're going to be in business forever. Okay, so you have no intention or necessity to close the business. So when we are in business, we assume it's we assume. So notice the word assume. That's very important to understand that we assume we are in business. We have no plan on closing. Now, under what circumstances do we make another assumption. In other words, under what circumstances we say we have a substantial doubt that we're not going to be in business. Well, here we go. If conditions and events exist, makes it more likely than not that the entity cannot meet its obligation as they come to within one year from issue report date. What does that mean? Simply put, if there are certain conditions and events, which we'll talk about those certain conditions and, and events shortly, if there's anything that's going to raise suspicious, that's going to raise doubts that we are not going to be a going concern, that we're going to be out of business for some reason, then we have to do something. And that's why we need to talk about going concern assumption. Now, who makes this ass assessment and when? Well, management. Management will have to make this assessment. Now, if you study aud auditing, you have to understand too that in auditing too, we have to do a going concern evaluation. But here, we're not talking about the auditing part. We're talking about preparing financial statements. And this requirement is fairly new. I believe 2014, they started requiring doing a going, uh, requiring a going concern assumption when you are preparing financial statements. And when do you have to do this assumption? It's when you prepare your annual and not or yeah, I mean or I mean or your interim financial statements so every every three months when you prepare your financial statements you have to make this assumptions now often time often time you don't have to worry about it there's no conditions or event exists that's gonna make it more likely than not but if there is any and we're gonna talk about those then we have to deal with those now the question is why do we care about this going concern assumption and why is this an issue in the first place now think of it from an from your, if you are an investor or a creditor, think of it from that perspective. Well, you're looking at the business and when you invest in a business, you always, when you invest, when you make an investment, you are looking into the future. That's what you are looking. You are always looking into the future. And that's why in accounting, we have what's called capital expenditure. And that's why we have something called revenue expenditure. What does it mean capital expenditure? It means when we spend money on something, when we buy an asset, when let's not call it an asset, when we buy something, if we think it's going to provide future benefit, we treat it as an asset versus if we don't think it's going to provide future benefit, we treat that something as an expense. Now think about it. If we are not going to be in business, in the foreseeable future is if we're going to go out of business whether it's voluntarily or not let's assume it's involuntarily we're you know we're running we're running into troubles and we have to go out of business well there's no reason to hold assets because the definition of an asset is there's a future benefit in the asset and that's why we depreciate for example if we have property plant and equipment what do we do with those we depreciate them we depreciate property plant and equipment and we depreciate them over several years two, three, four, five years. What's implied in that is we're going to be in business in the foreseeable future. 
if that assumption is violated, if we're saying no, we're not going to be in, in business, then there is no need to do. Uh, uh, there is no need to be to have an asset. There is no need for depreciation. What else do we have to do? Well, there is no asset necessary. If we have any assets, if we have property, plant, and equipment, now we need to sell them. When we need to sell them, most likely they're going to go down in value because we're going to sell everything all at once. Also, inventory. When we have inventory and we need to liquidate, we have to sell them immediately. We have to put them on sale. That's going to affect the valuation. How much are they reported at? Also, when you sell those property, plant, and equipment, or when you attempt to sell them, or when you write them down, you're going to have losses. And when you have losses, your gross profit will go down. You might violate your uh, debt covenant. As a result, some of the debt may, be, may need to be reclassified from, for example, long term into short term because your debt becomes due. If you're closing, if you're closing your business, your lenders, your bankers, they want their money immediately. They want their money too. Therefore, that long term debt that you classified as long term, that long term debt, well, you have to switch it to short term debt. So you have an issue with classification. And what happened under those circumstances when liquidation is imminent? It means that's it. Basically, we're going out of business when liquidation is imminent. We have to use liquidation basis of accounting, which is kind of bankruptcy accounting. And to tell you a small story about this, um, when I started my career, say 2005, 2006, um, as a CPA, by 2007, 2008. And if you know anything about those years, this was the financial crisis. And at that time, I was planning to make a move. I was planning to go to another CPA firm and, you know, kind of planning to move. And at that time, all jobs or most jobs and CPA companies, they would say, you know, if you have relevant experience and liquidation basis. Why? Because around that time, what's happening, most construction companies, most companies related to real estate, they were going out, they were going out of business. So the, all the accounting that you learn, that you learn in college, it basically is irrelevant. Why? Because you need to use the liquidation basis. And I still remember, like, I was like, what is liquidation basis of accounting? And most jobs, I would see this, this ad that liquidation basis of accounting. Well, it means how much money are you going to get out of out of the company, basically liquidate everything, bring everything at fair value, report that fair value, because investors and creditors, investors and creditors are interested in how much they're going to get out of the business. Therefore, liquidation basis becomes more relevant to them. OK, so this is only if bankruptcy is imminent. OK, now what factors do management consider when they're evaluating this uh, going concern. So what, what do they look at? They look both at qualitative and quantitative factors. What could be some factors? You would look at liquidity position, like you would look at cash ratios, cash to short term debt, cash to long term debt, cash to, you know, free cash flow, you know, any cash position, look your liquidity position. You look at funding to operate the business. Do you have enough money if you need property, plant and equipment? Do you have enough money to replace your old asset? Do you have enough money to operate your business, maintain the equipment, so on and so forth? You could look at debt that does within the next 12, 12 months. Okay. Can you pay, can you pay those that do you have enough cash on hand? Okay. Also, you would look at non, non quantitative, like qualitative, like industry condition. Is your industry deteriorating? Well, you're going to be in trouble. Um, do you have competition that's really eating your lunch? You're going to be in trouble. Do you have any negative financial trends overall? Is sales going down constantly? Your profit is going down. You're being squeezed. Your cost is going up. Negative financial trends. You would look at all of those. Now, this is not a complete list, obviously, but the point is to tell you that that's what management would look at. And it's hard for management to admit it's hard for management to admit uh, it's hard for management to admit what's going on i mean it's hard but it, they have to face the music they have to face reality okay so let's assume they did they did kind of determine yes there is a going concern issue there's a substantial doubt then what needs to be done and this is the important thing what needs to be done at least you have to disclose in the financial statements and simply put this is the crux of the story like you have to disclose you have to tell us what's going on why the main reasons reason or reasons or events that lead to the substantial doubt. Why is it lack of capital? Are you running out of money? You're not being financed. You cannot refinance your debt. You cannot ask for money from the capital market. Are you behind your technology? Is technology moving ahead of you and you are behind? Uh, are you have any legal factors? Did you lose any uh, any battle, legal battle that's going to affecting affecting your uh, your company substantially? Those are events or reasons, and those are not the only one. But those are the things that I, that I can think of that the company would evaluate, will take into consideration whether we have a serious doubt about our going concern. 
Three, they have eva we have the management will have to show, uh, evaluate those reasons and events. Basically, they have to t tell us, you know, what's going on with those. Not only list them, give us more information. Then they have to tell us what's the plan to mitigate those conditions and events. And this is important because what happened at the end of the day, we want to know if you're aware of these things. We're investors, we're creditors, and you have potential investors and potential creditors waiting. Tell us what is your plan. Convince us. Can you convince us that you have enough plan that we're going to get out of it? Okay. And what we do is we, you have to tell us the probability of implementation and success. What is the probability of implementing what you want to do? You know, turn, turn, turn around sales. How are you going to do that? Raise money. How are you going to do that? Are you negotiating with banks? Um, do you have good connection to the financial industry? Is any, is an investment bank help, helping you issue new stocks? And what is the success rate? Are you going to, are you going to succeed? Why? Because this is important. If you could implement and after implement, successfully execute what you wanted to do. So this is basically in a nutshell, you know, um, the going concern, like what's next? Now, what's, what's the issue? Again, if liquidation is imminent, we just start to use uh, liquidation basis of accounting. And this is basically what you need to know for the CPA exam in a nutshell. Um, always, I would like to remind you to visit my website. Also, if you're studying for your exam, look, you're going to study and make an investment in your lifetime, please. Check out my website. You have more resources, more lectures that's going to help supplement whatever you are doing. And if you like this video, please click on the like button. It helps me tremendously. Study hard. CPA is worth it. Good luck.